Hi and welcome to another story and today we have part one of the 26 story treehouse by Andy Griffiths and Terry Denton. Starting from the very beginning, chapter one, the 26 story treehouse. Hi, my name is Andy. This is my friend Terry. We live in a tree. Well, when I say tree, I mean treehouse. And when I say treehouse, I don't just mean any old treehouse. I mean a 26 story treehouse. It used to be a 13-storey treehouse, but we've added another 13 storeys. So what are you waiting for? Come on up. We've added a Dodgem car rink. Smash, crash. A skate ramp with a crocodile pit hazard. A mud fighting arena. An anti-gravity chamber. No, my money. Thanks for the tip, Sandy. An ice skating pond with real live ice skating penguins. A recording studio. A mechanical bull called Kevin. Turn it off. Did you say turn it up? An ATM that's an automatic tattoo machine in case you didn't know. An ice cream parlour with 78 flavours run by an ice cream serving robot called Edward Scooperhands. And the maze of doom, a maze so complicated that nobody has gone in who has gone in has ever come out again. Penguin bros, where are you? Enter at own risk. Certain death ahead. Are you crazy? Hazard! Stupid GPS. As well as being our home, the treehouse is also where we make books together. I write the words and Terry draws the pictures. As you can see, we've been doing this for quite a while now. Hold the ladder steady, stupid possum. <laughs> sure, Terry can be a bit annoying at times. But mostly, we get on pretty well. Chapter 2, the story of how we met. If you're like most of our readers, you're probably wondering how Terry and I met. Well, it's a long story, but it's a pretty exciting one, and it starts like this. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a very big city, and in that very big city, there was a very tall tower. And at the top of that very tall tower, there was an apartment, and in that apartment lived a little boy who was very lonely. Ring, 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 ring. Excuse me for a minute, that's our video phone. I better answer it. It's probably Mr Big Nose, our publisher. Yep, I was right, it's Mr Big Nose. Nobody else in the world has a nose that big. What took you so, so long, he says. I'm a busy man, you know. But it was only six rings, I say. Don't argue, he says. I'm a busy man. I don't have time to argue. How's the new book going? So far, so good, I say. I'm telling the story of how Terry and I met. Great idea, says Mr Big Nose. How did you two clowns meet anyway? Well, it's a long story, I say. But it's a pretty exciting one. And I don't have time to listen to long stories, said Mr Big Nose. Save it for the book. Just make sure it's on my desk by next Friday. The screen goes blank. Friday? But that's only next week. That doesn't leave much time. I'd better get moving. Now, where was I? Let me see. The faraway land, the very big city, the very tall tower, the apartment, and the lonely little boy. Andy, says Terry, bursting into the kitchen. We've got a problem. What sort of problem, I say? The sharks are sick. What's the matter with them? They ate my underpants. Chapter 3. Why the sharks ate Terry's underpants. I look at Terry for a minute as I try to understand what he just said. I'm sorry, I say. I must have misheard you. It sounded like you said the sharks ate your underpants. I did say that, says Terry. And now the sharks are really sick. They're just lying on the bottom of the tank, not moving. But why did they eat your underpants, I say. I mean, how did they even get them? Well, he says, I came up with the idea of using the shark tank to wash my underpants. I dangled a dummy over the top of the water and the sharks thought it was a real person and were jumping up all around trying to bite it and that churned up the water, you know, like in a washing machine. So then I put my underpants on the end of a stick and lowered them into the water. But the sharks were jumping around so much they knocked the underpants off the stick and then they ate them. Now the sharks are just lying on the bottom of the tank and they've gone weird, a weird green colour. You know, Terry has done some dumb things in the past, but this has got to be the dumbest ever. The top five dumbest things Terry has ever done. Five, put jelly crystals, lots, in the penguin bath. 
rode his horse, number four, rode his horse along the beach and passed the sign that said, danger, quicksand. It's going to work out just fine, horse. Number three, went rowing with his elephant friend. Number two, took his boa constrictor to a movie. And number one, tried to wash his underpants in the shark tank. What are we going to do, Andy, says Terry. I'm not sure, I say. If only we knew somebody who loves animals and knows all about them and lives close by so they could get here in a hurry. Yeah, says Terry. Somebody like Jill. Yeah, I say. Somebody exactly like Jill. Hey, I know, says Terry. Why don't we call Jill? Great idea, I say. In case you don't know who Jill is, she's our neighbour. She lives just on the other side of the forest and she loves animals and knows all about them. She's got two dogs, a goat, three horses, four goldfish, one cow, six rabbits, two guinea pigs, one camel, one donkey and 13 flying cats. Terry leaps up. I'll call her on the video phone right now. But Jill doesn't have a video phone, I say. No problem, says Terry. I'll use my new super flexible, endlessly extendable, titanium coated talking tube instead. Stupid tubey thing. Snake! Tubey thing. Hey Jill, says Terry. Can you come over right away? I'm kind of busy right now, says Jill. I'm having a tea party with my catenaries. But it's urgent, says Terry. The sharks are sick. What's wrong with them, says Jill. They ate my underpants, says Terry. Your underpants, says Jill. Oh no, how many pairs? Three, says Terry. I hope they were clean, says Jill. Well, no, says Terry. That's the thing, you see. I was trying to wash them. Oh no, says Jill. I'm on my way. Meet you at the shark tank. To the treehouse, fast. Here she is now, says Terry. Wow, I say that, that was fast. Yes, says Jill. These flying cats are great. Turning Silky into a catenary was the best thing you ever did. Terry, unlike feeding your underpants to the sharks, which has got to be the pretty much the worst. Jill peers into the tank. The poor thing, she says. I'd better get in and take a closer look. We watch as Jill and her cats dive into the tank and set to work. She tries acupuncture, dorsal fin massage, guided meditation. You are in a cool, deep ocean. You see a body thrashing helplessly. Shark aerobics. You put your dorsal fin in, you put your dorsal fin out. And motivational movies. Eek! But nothing seems to work. Finally, Jill rises to the surface. They're definitely the sickest sharks I've ever seen, she says. They're so sick, in fact, that I'm going to have to operate. Operate, I say. Yes, says Jill. I'm going to have to perform open shark surgery. Chapter 4. Open shark surgery. Cut open a shark? No way! You've got to hand it to Jill. She really loves animals, even sharks. I mean, I like animals, and I think sharks are really cool, but there's no way I'd ever get in a tank and operate on them. Not even if they're too sick to move. Boom. Sharp inspection opening. Help me! And judging by the way Terry is trembling, he's not too keen on the idea either. No! Well, I say, I guess we'll leave you to it. Good luck. Where do you think you're going, says Jill? To the kitchen, I say. I'm kind of in the middle of telling the readers a story. Yeah, says Terry. I'd better go as well. Andy will need me to draw the pictures. Oh, no, you don't, says Jill. Both of you are staying right here. I need you, need you to help me with the operation. But what about the readers, I say? Don't worry, says Jill. I'll deal with them. Excuse me, readers. Unfortunately, we've got a bit of an emergency here, and I'm just going to have to borrow Andy and Terry for a moment. Is that OK? Great. Thanks for understanding, and do feel free to watch. Just try not to sneeze. We don't want any more germs getting into these poor sharks. She turns back to us. I've explained the situation to the readers and they're fine with it. So get your diving suits on and let's get started. We shrug, put on our diving suits and follow Jill into the tank. Stupid tight wet suit. I don't know if you've ever been in a tank full of man-eating sharks before, but believe me, it's pretty scary. The sharks look even bigger down here than they do from up there. My, um, my, where, my work big feet, big teeth you have. My what big teeth you have, Grandma? What if the sharks wake up and get hungry while we're doing the surgery, I say? They won't, says Jill. Trust me. But just to be sure, I'll give them each a dose of Dr Numbskull's Sleepy Shark Sleeping Potion. I hate needles. Can I just ask one question, I say? Sure, says Jill. Aren't we underwater? Yes, of course we are, she says. Then how come we can talk? 
Sorry, Andy, but that's two questions and we only had time for one. Are you ready? Yes, but what do we do, says Terry. I've never operated on a shark before. It's not so hard, says Jill. You know how to work a zipper, don't you? Yes. Well, there's one about halfway down its belly. Just unzip it and empty the contents. Wow, I say. I never knew sharks had zippers. I unzip my shark and peer into its belly. As you might expect, it's full of fish. I can't see any sign of Terry's underpants, but I can see some sort of large round object. I reach in and pull it out. Hey, look what I found. It's Captain Woodenhead's wooden head. Yikes, says Terry. Ugh, says Jill. That's really creepy. Jill's right. It is really creepy. Even though the eyes are made of wood, it feels like they are looking right at you. And it's quite a coincidence, really, because Captain Woodenhead is actually tied up with that whole story I was telling you earlier about how Terry and I met. You remember that lonely little boy? The one at the top of the very tall tower? Well, Andy, says Jill, stop talking to the readers. Do I have to remind you that we're in the middle of open shark surgery? Let's focus and get this job finished. Then you can blather away all you want. I'm not blathering, I say. I'm narrating. Jill and Terry look at each other, roll their eyes and smile. Whatever, says Jill. Just save it till later. Hey, look what I found, says Terry, holding up a pair of underpants. And I just found a pair too, I say, pulling them out of my shark. And here's the third pair, says Jill, holding them up as far away from herself as possible. Terry, these underpants are disgusting. I know, he says. That's why I was trying to wash them. Well, the sharks be all right now, I say. I hope so, says Jill. I think the best thing for them is to be zipped back up and have a good rest. The cats and I can take it from here. And that is where we will leave part one of the 26 story tree house by Andy Griffiths and Terry Denton. I'll be back soon with the next part of this hilarious, strange story and uh, lots more videos and stories coming your way very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Thanks for listening, guys. Take care. Bye bye.